On the Vatican's global gathering called the Synod on Synodality does not take place until next year, but the preparations are well underway. The group organizing the event has released its first update. It says it is, quote, very pleased with the progress so far. The preparations have started with officials seeking input at the local level. The reflections on the life and state of the church will take two years, ending with the global gathering in Rome in October of 2023. Three. Joining us now from Rome is Andreas Tonhauser, EWTN Vatican Bureau Chief. Andreas, great to see you. Uh, what more can you tell us about this update? Thank you, Tracy. Well, today, Cardinal Mario Grech, the General Secretary for the Synod of Bishops, gave an update on the global synodal path. The processes started back in October 2021, and it produced quite some controversy among Vatican observers. Some immediately voiced concerns that it could be an internationalization of the German Synodal Path, which has been ongoing for more than two years now. Many fear a schism for the German Church, as just this weekend the German Synodal Path voted on four issues regarding sexuality against current Church moral teachings. A majority of the bishops and lay people participating in the process voted, for example, in favor of allowing blessings of same-sex relationships and a change of the catechism and its stance on contraception. Other issues discussed during the German Synodal Path are also highly controversial, such as married men and women to become priests and such as same-sex marriage. As things stand, the participants of the meetings of the Synodal Path will vote on these issues, and it is not quite clear what will happen if these votes call for a change of current Church teachings, but it might widen the gap between the official German Catholic Church and its faithful, at least those still attending Sunday Mass regularly. So, Andreas, is the Global Synodal Path then seeking to introduce the same process uh, that we're seeing in Germany for the whole Church? Well, on the global level, responsibles for the synodal process have constantly stressed that it is a process without a pre-mediated outcome. The first phase is a period of listening, in order to better understand the needs and concerns of the global church. Based on the issues raised in this phase, an agenda will be drafted. I've met some people involved in this process, and off the record, they said that they really want the process to be guided by the Holy Spirit. The idea of synodality finds its biblical prototype in the Council of Jerusalem. We can read about it in the Acts of the Apostles. The disciples discussed whether or not the Christian faith is meant for other peoples than just the Jews as well. Uh, Tracy, listening to the local church, the faithful around the world could also be a very positive thing. The bishops and their faithful in Africa, Asia, or Latin America might have other concerns than those in the West. And Andreas, I'm wondering, do we know how the church in those regions uh, are responding to the global synodal path? Well, in a press release issued today, the General Secretariat for the Synod of the Bishops, which organizes this worldwide process, said that 98 percent of all dioceses have appointed a person responsible for the synodal path on a local level. This means that there is a huge interest to participate in it. The global perspective of this process is very important. Faithful in Africa or in Asia struggle with completely different topics than those in the West, as I already mentioned. And the German agenda that we've just touched upon is of little interest to the millions of Catholics in countries such as Nigeria, India or Pakistan. For example, I interviewed Colonel Kutz uh, from Pakistan just a few weeks ago when he was here in Rome. He's also part of the Commission for the Synodal Path. And he said that his faithful are living their faith in a society where they're a very small minority living in constant danger of persecution. A Polish bishop shared with me that he's looking forward to the process as he will focus with his flock on how to improve in bringing Jesus to the people, a path toward new evangelization. In any case, I believe Pope Francis is right to call each and every one to pray for this process. Well, Andreas, thank you so much for that report. We appreciate it. Andreas Tonhauser, EWTN, Vatican Bureau Chief. Thank you again. Thank you.